Your beard game is strong, but uh, your pull-out game, not so much. Hey, happy Father's Day, though. Thanks a lot, buddy. Awesome. <laughs> hey, we are live. Welcome to the Beastly Thought Show. We are ready to go. We've got E3 to talk about. we got the Take It King to talk about. we got, I, I mean, how much stuff can we possibly fit in an hour-long show? we got Call of Duty switching to PlayStation 4. Have you guys seen that new Xbox Elite controller? I was not hyped for that, and now I super am. There's so <laughs> much to talk about today. Let's get to it. Beastly, what have you been playing this week? What have you been up to? This week I've been playing a lot of video games. I've been making a lot of videos. A lot of people have seen me this week. I, I uploaded a video to my reaction to some amazing news uh, during E3. Uh, at Sony's E3 press conference, they uh, announced the Final Fantasy VII Remake. And to my dismay, I had no idea this was coming up. And I happened to be in front of a camera, and I uploaded this video, and it's got 150,000 views. And I got tons of new subscribers, and I made lots and lots of new friends. And that video has just been going insane. Also, another video I uploaded this week was the Shin Mew 3 reaction video. That one is over 50,000 views. It's just really been a, a hell of a week dealing with a lot of new people, a lot of new uh, personalities, playing video games. I've been playing Destiny. I beat the uh, Prison, of, uh, Prison of Elders. That was really difficult. <laughs> I, did it, I did it twice. It was really awesome. Beat all the little side missions. And uh, I've been playing a little bit of The Witcher 3, and I've actually been playing some... Um, Elder Scrolls Online, which is actually pretty damn fun. Right. So that, yeah, that's what I've been playing this week. Yeah, Elder Scrolls Online, I'm probably about two or three hours in, just on the ground floor. I wanted to, to play it, so I went out and bought one for me and my wife. But at the same time, I didn't want to fully invest my time because I'm in the middle of Witcher 2. So it's one of those crazy situations where I just wanted to try it and then step back a little bit. But it's pretty fun. I think it's going to be a, a pretty nice experience so far. But it's been an exciting week for me. Uh, i got lots of exposure. I did an interview for a magazine talking about <laughs> Final Fantasy VII because I'm so passionate. And I made tons of new friends on YouTube, so it's been a really, really beautiful week for me. That's awesome. I'm I'm, I'm really excited for you. Like, I, I see the success you're having right now, and I'm super excited for you. Thank you so much, man. That means the world. Coming from you, sir, that really means a lot. I appreciate it. Robbie, how you doing, buddy? What have you been up to? I'm doing fantastic this week. So what I've been playing this week is... Haven't really been playing on consoles surprisingly that much, but I have been playing a lot on Steam because those Steam summer sales are on right now. And man, it has been incredible. Games 60, 70, 80% off. I've been playing Oblivion. I picked that up on Steam for five bucks with both the expansions. Okay. Still such an incredible game. I got Bioshock 1, 2, and Infinite for under $10, which is another incredible deal. Really been enjoying those games. I got Borderlands with the expansions for $7. Like, just insane, incredible deals right now. Today is the final day of the Steam Summer Sale. I really recommend you guys check out some of those deals. They are amazing. I have been playing so much on Steam this week, and that's really been about it for me. That's awesome. Ooh, ooh, I'm going to have to check some of those out. Those deals do sound exciting. Damn. They are. They're real good. That's my... That's my PC library. It's something you, that I'd like to see PlayStation and Xbox kind of pick up on are those those really good deals. Like they, PlayStation does some of them, but they never seem to be as current as what Steam does. Yeah, yeah think, you can't think, beat Steam. Like it's incredible. Those yeah. discounts are amazing. I mean, Fallout 3 and New Vegas are both like two dollars and fifty cents each right now. That is unbelievable value for those games. Like they are incredible. They are huge. You can play them for weeks, months. Like. Unbelievable value. It's years. just incredible. <laughs> yeah. Maybe years? Like... All right, so I've been playing, obviously, uh, House of Wolves. Uh, I did not get to go to E3. I was really disappointed. I would have liked to go and play uh, the Taken King because we saw a lot of Taken King footage this week come out for Destiny. But I'm still really enjoying House of Wolves. We got uh, the Skolas kind of uh, rejiggering of that fight. So the level 35 Prison of Elders kind of got rebalanced. Uh, frankly, it's a lot easier now than it used to be. Uh, it still can take quite a while. I've heard reports of it taking up to 45 minutes for that boss fight, uh, oh. which is crazy. You know, that's a long time. I don't think it's taken me that long, but I, I definitely have had at least a half an hour in that one arena. Uh, I'm really enjoying Trials of Osiris. Like I said before, it's like my new favorite thing. Uh, getting a fire team of three together for super competitive gameplay is just amazing. So I'm just really having a blast with uh, the House of Wolves DLC that we just got, but what I'm really looking forward to is now the Taken King, because what we're seeing coming out of E3 is just so exciting. Can we just just jump right into Destiny Taken King? For sure. sure. Alright, let's Isn't do it. Absolutely. Right Alright, so obviously the Taken King was uh, shown at E3, and it's an early version of it, so there's a lot of 
There's a lot of stuff that was shown that's not quite going to be what's in the game when it's released. But let's talk about what we know. There's going to be a new raid, which everybody's super excited about. Uh, Luke Smith, who's the designer of the raid, actually said it's going to be bigger than the Vault of Glass, and it's going to have more of an exploratory feel uh, that the Vault of Glass had, but the Crota's End raid did not, which I think a lot of people are very excited about. I love to hear that, yeah. Uh, we're going to fight Oryx in that raid, who's Crota's father. Uh, he's We've seen the trailer come out. He, he's definitely a vengeful dude, right? He's pissed off. He killed he his son. Pissed. He's coming for for revenge. He's got his Taken army, which is basically, I don't know if you'd call them zombified, but mind-controlled or somehow controlled versions of all the other races. I'm really hoping to see some Guardians in that mix. Ooh. That'd be really cool. <laughs> uh, we've seen a little bit of the story. It looks like we're going to go back to the Cosmodrome, get in that rocket that we've all seen so many times, fly that into space, crash it into Oryx's like, uh, spaceship, and that's how we enter. That should be really cool. I mean, it just looks phenomenal. We're getting three new subclasses. Uh, I, I really am excited about the Hunter subclass uh, because I think it's going to add a PvE element that the Hunter sorely needs. I, I'm really excited about it. What do you guys think? What, do you, what, do you, what did you guys think about all the announcements we saw for Destiny? From what I've seen of the Taken King so far with the new maps and the new modes and stuff, it almost looks like an entirely new game. Like, for $40 you know there's got to be something substantial in this new expansion, and this is almost like a brand new game. It's incredible. There are so many new types of weapons. That new Rift mode, I think it is, kind of like mm -hmm. Capture the Flag with that little objective. That looked That's so really needed. Yeah, it just it looks like there's there's so many changes coming with the Taken King. Like This is the biggest overhaul to this game yet. This is going to be a substantial, substantial expansion, and I'm super excited to play it, because I love Destiny. I really do, and Whenever there's new content that comes out, I definitely jump right into it. This is going to be, honestly, almost like a new game to me. I really feel like this is going to be an awesome expansion. I, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. I, I, as somebody who kind of drifted away from Destiny and slowly getting back into it, especially with the uh, House of Wolves expansion, I think the Taken King, what it's offering is, it's, I couldn't have said it better myself, Robbie, it's pretty much a whole new game. All this content all these new modes, all these new weapons, new story dynamic, all these things is kind of adding a whole new dimension to the game, a whole new degree of continuity. The story is going to continue. You're going to get so much more of that. A lot of people have been upset about that for, for a long time, that the, the game has a lacking story aspect. But I think that adding this whole new paradigm of Crota's father coming and, and leaving the planet, things that you've seen before, it's just going to add so much more. And, and the package is already media as hell. I was looking at it uh, last night. And I was thinking about everything that's included with all the DLC that I have right now. That's a hell of a game. It's huge. If you it's were just, incredible. If you were to just start right now at the beginning of Destiny and go all the way through to the House of Wolves expansion, that is a ginormous experience. And the fact that they're adding this new DLC, this is going to be like the, one of the biggest games as far as first-person shooter slash RPG of all time. It's really amazing. I think it's going to be really great. So it's not all you know, roses here, because a lot of people are really upset about the pricing of this next expansion, right? You can buy the expansion alone for $40. You can buy the Legendary Edition, um, which is $60, and that comes with all of the previous content. That includes Vanilla Destiny, uh, The Dark Below, House of Wolves, and now The Taken King. That's, That's an unbelievable $60. amount of value, especially because if you've been playing Destiny from the beginning, it's like the people who are jumping in now, they're going to get the sweet deal. Like they're, You're getting yeah. such a better value than everyone else who's been playing it from day one. I don't feel like that pricing is really fair, to be honest. Like, well, it's insane it's not, if you're just jumping in. The but. collector's edition, I think, is the real issue, right? Is The collector's edition is $80. That comes with everything that's in the Legendary Edition, so all of the content up to now, plus the Taken King, plus you get some in-game collectibles like shaders, I think a new Sparrow, uh, some stuff like that. I think a new, some new dance moves for your Guardian. You also get <laughs> yeah. a strange coin, like a physical strange coin in the box, like a, a book. You get a steel book for the game. A lot of people are pissed off, though, because they want that collector's edition, but they don't want to pay $80 because they feel like they've they've already bought the game, right? They've already been playing, they've already bought, uh, you know, Vanilla Destiny, Dark Below, and uh, The House of Wolves. They don't feel like they should have to rebuy that just to get that strange coin. And I can kind of see their point, you know, you, you kind of feel like you're double paying a little bit, but it is the collector's edition, and 
you know, it is a premium well, price to get that stuff. Well, the thing is, you feel like you, the purchase you previously made was devalued, right? If you get the collector's edition for 60 bucks, which has Vanilla Destiny and this new expansion, are they saying that the $100 you've already spent is only worth 20 now? Because if you buy well, the expansion... Content. Isn't that always how it works, though? It's old content. It's old content, but it's old content plus two expansions. So they're saying that that old content, which you paid sixty bucks for, more than likely, plus the expansion that you paid thirty bucks for, which is ninety bucks, close to a hundred dollars, is devalued to twenty dollars now because they're selling the expansion by itself for forty and twenty bucks for all that old content. I can kind of understand where people are coming from, and as somebody who owns all the old content, pretty much there's no way for a person like me to get the collector's edition because there's no way I'd spend that kind of money on content I already own. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's a real I, issue. I think. There's I, a, I think the way to solve this, right, is to make a sixty dollars version that just comes with the Taken King and then the, like the collector's edition content. Yeah, yeah, or fifty dollars. Oh, you know, uh, then, because, then you're getting a real value. <laughs> I yeah. think sixty dollars yeah. would be the right price. Yeah, I, I think that's a better overall deal. Uh, I think most of the people who are playing Destiny right now already have Destiny and they have the previous DLCs. Right. You know, a majority of them. So to re-release that at a twenty-dollar premium, uh, in addition to the forty-dollar DLC, to me seems kind of crazy. I understand yeah. the argument there. Yeah, I thought you were a little, 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 little pissed about it, but at the same time, it is a collector's edition, right? Like, you generally pay a lot for these things. I honestly feel like the worst offender here, to be honest, is isn't it right that you have to own um, House of Wolves and uh, Dark Below to play the Taken King? Am yeah. I correct about that? Yeah. That seems that's insane to me. They're asking you to buy these expansions, and if you don't own them, you can't play this new content. That's not fair to me, right there. That's Ooh. actually my biggest issue: is just locking off content because you haven't bought the previous expansions. That's, that's yeah, a hell of a dilemma. Just uh, well, look at the look at the logistics issue of it, right? It's like, okay, you're in a fire team, you want to go, you, you know, you want to go to a raid. You, you've been playing the Taken King with your buddy, and all of a sudden, you know, oh, you don't have the you don't have the dark below, so we can't do Crota's End, or you know, you can't do this, or you can't do that. They want to keep it cohesive. They want they want to allow everybody to play together. I think that's why they're releasing this, you know, the sixty dollar version of Destiny that has everything. Right? That's so, true. But if you, your game say should you be accessible to everybody. Destiny. You should yeah, allow everybody. That's what to I'm get saying, though, Robbie. If, say you bought the original Destiny for sixty bucks, but you skipped the Dark Below and you skipped House of Wolves. Well, you can go and buy the. Uh, House of Wolves, or not House of Wolves, you can go buy the Taken King disc edition or the digital edition for 60 bucks. You're, you're buying 40, you're getting a $40 Taken King, and you're, get, you're saving $20 because you're only basically paying for one of the two DLCs that you missed. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, I don't know, it's it's a tough thing with this whole value proposition. Like, I don't know, it's just, I'm not sure about it. Yeah. I, I, uh, I feel like a, over a thousand hours into Destiny, so I, the game doesn't owe me a thing. <laughs> yeah, they've got an incredible value with, out of it. I think with the number of Destiny adopters, it'll, it's going to work itself out either way. Can we please move to E3, guys? All right, E3. let's do it. So, I kind of made a list of the things I'm most excited about. Uh, Robbie kind of made a list of everything. Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> I'm going to start off with uh, the stuff that I thought was really exciting about Microsoft, and I thought. Backwards compatibility for the Xbox One and that 360. So it'll now be able to play Xbox 360 games on the Xbox One. I thought it that seemed like it was an, It seemed like it was an impossible thing too. They were saying how like we want to do it, but we can't do it. We don't know how to because the architecture in the 360 and Xbox oh. One is just different. We can't do this. But they obviously figured out a way how to do it, and now you're going to be able to play online with people even on the 360. It's mm -hmm. all going to be compatible. I think that's such an awesome thing. I'm personally not super excited about it because I'm usually just excited for the new stuff, being able to play the new games, but this is awesome because I know a lot of people want this. Yeah, I this, think it's huge. This is actually really great news, and I think it's going to change the paradigm for PlayStation as well. Uh, there's a lot of things that Microsoft has done in the past few years that Sony has taken notice of and slowly, gradually started to come on board, and I think this is one that Sony needs to definitely look at because Sony is their backwards compatibility is something... That you pay for. Did so you hear that, you guys, going. that they still aren't considering it, even after this announcement? Like Sony it's, said, we're still not considering it. I see, Briar, Briar. That cell processor, man. There's no yeah. way. No way. That's the issue right there. Yeah. It's that, too different. PlayStation 3 was just, it was a poor design choice with that cell processor. Mm -hmm. And it's going to hold them back from copying or 
following in Microsoft's footsteps. <laughs> the, yeah. the, I doubt it. Like, well, maybe with the PlayStation 5, they'll be able to emulate PlayStation 3 games. Yeah, but but uh, even if they if, if it was some way possible, I think they should at least look at that. Because, honestly, anybody playing the PlayStation 4 or playing on the PlayStation Vita who wants to play old games, instead of even if you have them, PlayStation 4 can't play them. And you got to be charged to play on PlayStation Now. And They actually made a comment during Xbox's conference that we're not going to charge you to play games that you already own. Yeah. And so I think it's pretty cool, uh, and hopefully in the future Sony figures out a way to implement backwards compatibility because that's always been something that's important and dear to me. I remember PlayStation 2 could play PS1 games. It just made so much sense, and uh, these last few generations have slowly gotten away from it. I thought that was great news too, Brian. Yeah, I thought it was, it was huge. Surprising. Yeah. Uh, I think it'll really change the paradigm, frankly. When people who are adopting new consoles, and you know, one of them offers, hey, you can play all your old games on this console as well, and the other one doesn't. That's going to change a lot of people's minds. You know, even, even if they've heard, oh, PlayStation 4 is a little bit better, you know, maybe that's true, maybe it's not, but you can play all your old games on the Xbox One. That's a big, that's a big deal. And you yeah. can't do it on PS4, but it's unreliable. Like, if your internet isn't working well enough or the Sony's having a problem with their Gaikai servers, then it's, not, it's going to be unreliable. It's not going to be a consistent experience with PlayStation Now. And that's the issue. They need true local backwards compatibility. You put the disc in and you play the game. Yeah. That's what they need. Uh, Microsoft's also getting a new dashboard for the Xbox One. They're ditching Windows 8, which is Thank a goodness. fantastic idea. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Just get away um, from it. And it looks really good. Did you guys see like any of the screenshots or the demos for the new dashboard? It looks really cool. No, it's I got Cortana, it. so you can like talk to your Xbox, ask it like uh, what which of my friends are online, and it'll tell you, you know, things like that. It's, it's oh, cool. Wow. Did they, is there any estimated time of delivery for this new uh, user interface? I did not see that. Did anybody see the time frame on that? No. Man, that sounds great. Cortana is awesome. Yeah. Wow. So I'm I'm looking forward to that because I really hate the interface on my Xbox One. I think everybody does. Another thing I hate about my Xbox One is the controller. And now uh, we heard that there was going to be a new controller, and I thought, well, what are they going to change? They're going to put a headphone jack on the controller. Big whoop. They announced the new Elite controller. Have you guys Make seen this thing? Yeah. Yeah. So it's got paddles on the back, similar to a scuff. Right there. It's got removable thumbsticks, and you can swap them out for different lengths uh, at home. It's got a removable uh, digital pad, which you can swap out. You know, it comes with all of this stuff, too, in the box. It's got it's the hair trigger got locks. trigger stops. stops. Yeah, yep. so you can set how far you have to depress the uh, triggers to get it to register. It is a really nice controller. And now Scuff and all these third-party controller... Uh, manufacturers are going to have some competition too because Microsoft's going to be stepping into the ring. Even though we now know what it costs, it's going to be $150 for this Elite controller. That is not cheap, but that's not a cheap controller. Premium. But it doesn't look like a cheap controller either. It looks yeah. like a premium controller. It looks yeah. really nice. Well, well, and I don't know how much did you pay for your scuff. I think because I live in Canada, it costs more with the shipping and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think it was around 180 with all yeah, the features. Yeah, I think mine was around 200 too. It may, it may have been 10 or 15 dollars cheaper than 200. But I would r much rather have this Xbox Elite controller than a scuff. Because you don't uh, have to wait like for it to be shipped either. If you're going to be able to buy it in stores, that's going to be incredibly convenient. It'll be cheaper. Yeah. It'll well, be really nice. Well, after Microsoft's E3 show, they had a post show on one of these game uh, networks. And one of the gentlemen who actually held this Elite controller and played with it said, if you had ten controllers on the table and you picked this one up, you would immediately know what it was. He said, this is not the controller you're going to leave around your kids. It's the one he said, he said he's going to put it in his safe. That's how much better it feels yeah. than any other controller. He said it's made with all metal parts, and it's heavy. It feels weighted really well in your hand. It's contoured well. So, I mean, I didn't get a chance to see it. Honestly, I didn't see it. Oh, but, it looks great. It really looks great. Uh, I'm really looking forward to getting this. Um, unfortunately, I won't be playing Call of Duty with it because uh, Call of Duty's the platform of choice is the PS4. I thought that was huge news. Great segue, too. Really enjoyed that. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> that was good. I liked that. I was like, where is this going? He's in our whole week. And, and, Robbie, you called this uh, weeks in advance, so good call for you. Call of Duty at home on PlayStation 4, man. Has this changed a lot for you, Brian? How does it make you feel? Uh, well, I mean, I, I, I have been a big Call of Duty gamer in the past. I think we all have. Um, and... Xbox has always been kind of the 
the platform well, of choice for Call of Duty because you get the DLC early. Um, you know, it's just a better deal to get it on Xbox, and it's always felt like the lead platform too. The game yeah. has always played better on Xbox than it has on PlayStation. I think more so in the previous generation of consoles. Mm-hmm. This generation, I would argue that maybe that's not the case. Yeah. But, you know, we're going to start seeing the MLG switch over to PS4s. We're going to start seeing pro gamers switch over to PS4s. This is a big deal for PlayStation. It's a big deal for the COD community. And uh, I think that there's actually a lot of Xbox gamers out there that are pissed off about this. I'm amazed because I would have never imagined Call of Duty being a PlayStation game. Like, can you imagine, like, four or five years ago, it's like, can you ever see Call of Duty going to PlayStation being the lead platform? No, there's no way that would ever happen. But now it just seems more plausible because the PS4 is the best-selling console this generation. It's one of the best-selling consoles in history. It's doing yeah. incredibly well. And this makes a lot of sense. The contract with Activision and Microsoft ended with Advanced Warfare, so now Sony's decided to pick it up for Black Ops 3. And I don't know if it's going to be as big as it was in the past. Call of Duty is definitely not as popular as it was, yeah. but it's still, it's still a huge franchise. And I think this is a win for Sony, but maybe not as big as it would have been three or four years ago. If well, I you look at the combination of Destiny being better on PlayStation 4 and Call of Duty being better on PlayStation 4, that is yeah. a strong combination for shooter fans. Yeah, That's big. Yeah, everybody's going to want to move right over and just because this is where you want to play your shooters, this is going to be the new home. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I knew this could happen as soon as I saw Sonic holding Mario's hand at the Olympics. That's what let me know that this kind of shit can happen anytime. Uh, <laughs> My whole world <laughs> fell apart that day. <laughs> I, uh, Next thing you know, they'll release Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yeah, on Xbox. Oh. Uh, the thing is, a lot of people are, are questioning why this happened. I have my own ideas as to why this uh, this exclusive... Ex- exclusive. Yeah, it's money. It's all money. <laughs> yeah, money it's all money. Tongue-tied. Yeah, easier for me to say. It's all money. And uh, PlayStation 4, to me, has a much bigger install base at this point. And I think Activision's understanding that, and dollars make sense. Is that is pretty much the consensus with you guys as well? Is that what you think happened? I think Sony paid Activision a truckload of money to make them the you know the lead platform for Call of Duty because they know that Call of Duty is has a ton of exposure. When you know you got MLG streamers, when you got Optic Nade Shot and guys like that streaming using an Xbox controller, uh, that doesn't look good for Sony. So Sony wants those guys to be on MLG. Uh, or on Twitch using the Sony controller and talking about and and using the dashboard of the PS4. This is yeah. a huge marketing thing for Sony. I think it's a huge win for Sony, assuming that Call of Duty p- stays popular. Like, I mean, if they signed like a 10-year deal here, you know, it may be a questionable decision. But it's a big win right now. Black Ops 3 looks good. People are super excited for Black Ops 3. I am. Uh-huh. I'm so excited for it, because Advanced Warfare, I know, Briar, and you and I can relate to it. Advanced Warfare totally lost us. We, like, I played Call of Duty every single day like you did. I loved every game up until Advanced Warfare. It just it lost me. I just didn't get into it. I didn't care for the EXO movement, even though it felt fantastic to pull off. It was really well executed, but it just didn't work in the gameplay department. And Black Ops 3, it just looks like a return to what Call of Duty was, but it's yes. an evolution. It's a new generation. It's a new evolution of that franchise, and I'm, I'm really excited about it. Like I think I'm going to be able to jump right back in, and I'm really looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I am too. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to get my hands on this. There's going to be a beta for it, which I'm really excited to check out. So Honestly, we actually can play it before the game comes out. Coming first to PS4. Coming yep. first to PS4. That's a Ooh. big one too. Yeah. Ooh, you know, I got a lot of friends on Xbox who've been talking a lot of shit about Call of Duty, so now it's time for the PlayStation Elitists to start regurgitating that shit back at them. So yeah, it was real, it was a really big, big thing for uh, Sony this year to be able to announce that. And uh, I wanted to talk about something, guys. That we saw a lot of new IPs this year at E3. One of them stood out to me among the rest as something that I felt like I absolutely must play. I know what this is. This game was uh, announced during Sony's E3 press conference. Yep, yep. It was, an, it was announced by Gorilla. Yep. And it's called Horizon. Uh, I'm trying to remember the last time. Zero Dawn. Zero Dawn. Zero Dawn. Uh, this game really blew my mind. It took me totally by surprise. Everybody knew that uh, Gorilla was working on something. People were theorizing it'd be an RPG or something totally out of left field compared to what they normally do, which is Killzone. 
I saw this game. I saw the way it moved, the way it looked. I have to have it the day that it comes out. Did you guys? <laughs> how did you guys feel when you saw Horizon Zero Dawn? Horizon is no question my game of show. That demo was unbelievable. I watched it so many times. Like, I love the concept, first of all, because it's like this prehistoric like tribe of people. It's Terminator. In, it's in this Terminator. age where robots have taken over, like these like robotic dinosaurs and animals, and it's got like this prehistoric vibe to it. It looks incredible. And that demo they showed, it just oh. like, it looks so impressive. It looks gorgeous. That is Absolutely the game I'm most excited for. That is the one game I wish was out right now. I want to play it so badly. Like I am so excited for Horizon. That was yeah. unbelievable. I, I, the combat think, looks fun. The yeah. world looks interesting to explore and to be in. But these are the guys that showed us these Killzone trailers that knocked everybody's socks <laughs> off. These are the same guys. I'm but not this gonna I'm not gonna pre order this game based on a on a Gorilla Games teaser trailer. No way. Well, let me just say this. I, I did my E3 reviews of all the conferences, and when I talked about this game, I did mention that based on the aesthetic alone, I would buy the game, but I'm really cautious because this is the same team that gave me the story for Killzone Shadowfall. They, they Their storytelling is lacking. Their ability to they build They release trailers home. that look better than the game. Way better. Well, they Killzone did this for the original Killzone. Killzone really is good. They did this for Killzone 3, and they did this for... Uh, Shadowfall. Yeah. You look at that trailer for Shadowfall that came out uh, when the PlayStation 4 was getting released or announced. No way the game looked that good. I mean, the game looked good when it came out, but not that good. I thought it was I think, I think Shadowfall looked as good when it was released as, as the trailer. That's my personal opinion. I'd agree with you, Brett. I thought Shadowfall looked incredible. That it game looked, looked gorgeous. It, it looked just as good as the gameplay stone. I, thought it looked I, up. I disagree. There were some parts that looked really good. There were some parts that looked like, ah, this could have been on the PlayStation 3. There were some. No. I don't think there was really anything no that could have been on PS3. Uh, well, Robbie, we are agreeing in, in Briars. What the hell is happening? Briars is a crazy old man. Don't look at the Briars. Don't look at the Briars. He's a crazy old man. You can't get man. off my lawn. <laughs> this, this is what I'm saying. See? This, Don't this listen is, to him. He's crazy. Is, He's mad. Guys, He's twisted. Let, let us know in the comments. Do you think Killzone Shadowfall looked as good as the actual game as it did during the pre-release as far as the trailers went? I thought it did. No way. But, uh, but this game, man, I, I think it looks great. I think that the whole story that they're trying to build is amazing. You want to know more. You're theorizing. I'm theorizing that it was a Terminator situation. They built their own sky and they wiped us out. Uh, but their story, and, and, and Killzone Shadowfall, I didn't care about the characters at all. I didn't care about who I was or what was happening to the world or what was happening. I didn't care. I was just shooting. It was a gun gallery. So I'm hoping that they're able to bring in new talent or someone who's more talented than the last team to write this story, and if they can, this game will be an amazing game. I thought it looked fantastic. The exciting part for me is that this is a brand new IP. Like, Gorilla has been chained to Killzone for the last 10 years. They've been making Killzone games. That's why I think you guys, like, the story's going to be good. This is Gorilla. They're going to do whatever they want with this game. They're not held back. Like, with Killzone, they were kind of held back by that universe. They couldn't do whatever they wanted to do, but this game, they're going all out. I think this we'll game see. is going to be We'll incredible. see. I don't trust these guys. <laughs> I do. I yeah, really do. Trust. They're doing what they right. want to do, finally. They're making the game they want to make. I trust them completely. This is the game they've been wanting to make for the longest time, I can tell. It's going to be incredible. All right. How about Fallout 4 coming out this year? Oh, shit! Just amazing. That They showed so much of that Bethesda conference, too. Like they were, That was like at least 30 minutes. Just everything. I am so excited for this game. November is basically going to be a month without Briar Rabbit. Damn! Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna like I'm gonna I'm gonna find a very comfortable and warm place with a TV and a PlayStation, and I'm going to play the shit out of that game. Hold on, Briar. I gotta ask you a question. Now, during Microsoft's press conference, they announced that their version of Fallout 4 would come with, um, I believe, that it comes with Fallout 3, and it comes with the ability to play. Well, I guess later on down the line. Uh, mods from the PC world. So you're going to be able to port mods from the PC over to the Xbox One and use them. Does that detour you at all from buying on PlayStation 4? Does that matter I, I, at all? I believe that they have. They later said that PlayStation 4... There's no reason that PlayStation can't do that as well. But yes, if I could play mods on the Xbox One, 
I will definitely play it on Xbox One. I don't, I don't care what platform I play it on. I it just seems play. like Fall 4 is going to be the lead platform on Xbox One. That's where I'm going to get it, because it seems like it's going to be the yeah. lead platform for that game. Like, just go where... Because all of these games, you have to think about either get them on the platform they're being built for, like Call of Duty is probably going to be a PS4 game. This is an Xbox One game. Unless all your friends are playing it, go for the lead platform. So I'm getting it on Xbox One. Yeah, I, I don't really care which one I get it for. Me neither. It'll be amazing on anything. It will. It'll well, be incredible on everything. When they announced that, I looked right right over at Kate and I told her, I said, oh, I got to buy it on Xbox One. If I'm going to be able to play mods on the Xbox One and not on the PS4, I got to do that. I think the mod community is awesome. I think the modding scene is amazing. And as and as someone who never plays mods or, or plays PC games, I think to be able to have that at home on a console will be really amazing. And uh, so unless Sony announces that the PS4 version will be able to do that, I'll definitely be picking it up on the Xbox One. Now I'm playing with that new Elite controller. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll drop a buck fifty for it. I want to ask you guys about, to me, some of the biggest news that came out of E3 this year. It came totally out of left field for me. I was not expecting it. As you guys know, in December of last year, Sony or, or Square announced that they were going to port the PC version of Final Fantasy VII to the PlayStation 4 yep. with, at 1080p, but it was a PC version of the game, which basically was the old version of the game, just a little bit cleaner. And so Words are to remake. So when they, and everybody was crying remake, and that's that's something at the time they said they weren't going to do. This year's uh, at Sony's conference, they pulled the rug from under me because they started talking about this game that has a long legacy and people have been asking for. So I immediately thought that they were going to show us this Final Fantasy VII PC port. Then I was like, to... yeah, who cares? And then yeah. I was like, what is this? I was like, this isn't 15. What is this? That's I couldn't cool. figure it out. That's my thing. As soon as I saw the CG, I, I immediately thought it was 15. Then I saw the car on the on the uh, bridge. I was like, is this 15? Because yeah, 15 I was like, this, isn't, this is something else. I couldn't figure a, it out, too. They do a lot of driving. And so during all the little cutscenes, because I was analyzing as I watched, I saw what looked like Mid Midgar. And you guys who play Final Fantasy VII know Midgar is the main city in the game that you start in. And so I saw that, and I was like, oh, no, is this Midgar? Is this a movie? I was really thinking that it could possibly be a movie. And I saw Midgar again, and then I saw the flowers on the ground, which is Ares' flowers. She's a flower girl. So I was thinking, either they're going to do another Final Fantasy Crisis Core type of situation like they did on the PSV, where it's a, a one-off of Final Fantasy VII, or this is a movie. I totally did not believe that this is a remake. And then the, the trailer continued and said they're coming back. I saw Barrett, which everybody on YouTube has been calling me, the big black guy with the beard. I saw his gun pistol, and then I saw a cloud next to him, with his Buster Sword, and I completely lost it. I think a huge majority of gamers that are in my age group, Mr. Rabbit, yourself included, who like Final Fantasy VII, went ape shit. Did this uh, reveal mean anything to you guys? And if, if so, what did it mean for you? I've never played Final Fantasy VII before, but oh. I knew how huge this was because S Square just trolled everybody back in December, and then to come out with this was incredible. Like just came out of nowhere. They had to be working on it, right? They oh, definitely did, did. yeah. Yeah, uh, it, it just it meant so much to me. I'm really happy for you, Robbie. I actually did an interview for a gaming magazine uh, the day before yesterday, and uh, I talked about this in this interview. The reason that I think it's important for Square to release this game and what it means for gamers now, the visual aesthetic of the original Final Fantasy VII does not hold up very well. If you see kids who grew up in the seventh generation of gaming, they won't want to play a game that looks like Final Fantasy VII just based on the visuals alone. And so in order to understand what that game is, you've got to eat through the visuals to understand the meat and the heart of what that game is. And so if they're able to maintain the heart and the substance that made that game amazing and what made it magical for so many people, but at the same time what appears like they're going to upgrade, I guess, uh, eighth-generation uh, clothing, this gives people like you, Robbie, and other gamers who are in their early 20s and teens late teens, the opportunity to play a game that meant so much to so many people. I'm super happy about this. To me, this is the greatest news out of E3 this year, out of anything. To me, this is the number one thing, and uh, that was probably my moment, my moment with God at E3 in my entire life. I was so amazed. I had tears in my eyes. It was an amazing I'd love moment. to play it. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to trying that out. I need to play that game at some point, definitely. I think it's going to be open world. Oh, my God. I think... Uh, I mean, just look at uh, the way they're doing 15. I mean, Final Fantasy 15 looks phenomenal. The way that you're able to 
uh, traverse the landscape the way the enemies look. If they're able to do something like that with Final Fantasy VII, that's all I want. That's all I would want. You know, and Final Fantasy VII has so much replayability, so many things you can do. Uh, I'm just so excited. I don't care how long it takes. As long as they do it right, I'm just really happy about that. Blew my mind. E3. All right, so Robbie, what? give us something from E3 that kind of hit you by surprise or really excited you when you saw it. This, I'm surprised how much I flipped out when I saw this because I had a feeling it was coming, but obviously we were all so skeptical. When that Sony <laughs> conference opened and Sean Lane came out and said, this first game has been a very long-awaited game. I, I was like, no, there's no way. And he kept saying, it's been known as a poetic story, only kept alive through people's minds. I was like, there's no way they're showing this. And then, sure as heck, it was The Last Guardian. And oh. I was, I couldn't believe we were seeing it. I really couldn't. It's been so long. It's been six years we've known about this game. We have never, ever seen gameplay of it. That was the very first gameplay we've ever seen on The Last Guardian. Six years now, we've had like one or two trailers. This game has been dead. We all thought it was dead. It came back. I was so in shock. I was so happy. I really couldn't believe it. What, how did you think of the gameplay? Feel? Yeah, I was going to ask the same thing. What did you think about the gameplay, Remy? It looks good. I mean, it looks like such a unique game to me, navigating with the bird dog. I don't know what you call it, navigating with the little boy. It looks like a really fun game. It does to me, and I'm really excited for it because... I can't believe this game is still alive. We all thought, we were all so skeptical, like there's no way it's going to be there, and I just couldn't believe it. I, I, as soon as I saw it come up, I kind of lost my mind. I was like, I can't believe this is happening. Like, It took me a long time to get over it, definitely. Yeah, when they showed that, it kind of caught me off guard too, and I figured if, if Sony was starting with The Last Guardian, they had to really have a good show. And what do they have it. next? Like, they're starting yeah. with the freaking Last Guardian. That's huge. Yeah, I... I, I I saw the gameplay, it'll be okay, Robbie. I saw the gameplay, <laughs> and I just felt that really endearing feeling that I had with Shadow of the Colossus. I can tell that they're going to truly build this relationship between the main character and this last guardian, this creature. There's a ghost in Briar's house. His door just oh. opened. Oh, my God, it's behind him. Oh, no, uh, look out, Briar, you're under attack. Oh, look out. Uh, hold on. <laughs> but uh, the, the way the game actually looked and the way the game uh, controlled really got me... Feeling, I guess, really similar to the way I did when I played Shadow of the Colossus. I could tell by the way that this creature was reacting with the boys that you're going to feel a bond by the way that they act. And pretty much, you're going to need the creature to survive, and the creature's going to need you. And I think they showed that throughout this little trailer, that there was a time where the creature could have died, and there was a time that you could have died, and how you, you feed off of one another. I think it's really awesome, the little, uh, I guess, bullet time when you're jumping toward the creature and time slows down, and I guess you can control the creature to try to grab you, but if you miss with the mouth, how the tail came up underneath and grabbed him, I thought that was really special. I can't wait to play this game. I can't believe this game is still alive. Like, even more than just seeing the game itself, it did look like a fantastic game. It looks like it's going to be incredible, but I was like, I can't believe we're watching The Last Guardian now. Like, I can't believe they finally showed it. They finally showed it. I, I was trying, I had to tell myself, I'm like, you're watching The Last Guardian right now. I, I just couldn't believe it. Like, it's a dream. It's like a dream came true. It was amazing. It was incredible. And yeah, that should have been the biggest thing, but there was still more to come. Hold on, I can't hear Briar. Briar, your, your mic's not on. <laughs> a little bit disappointed Listen. by The Last Guardian oh, okay. trailer. Okay, let us know why. Um... So, their previous games, uh, Ico or Eco, whatever you call it, Eco. that was pretty great. Uh, it wasn't as good as some people say it was, but it was pretty good. Uh, Shadow of the Colossus is one of the coolest games I think ever made. It just felt completely original. And on the PlayStation 2, like I mean, if you look back on it, the graphics don't look that good, but at the time, they were stunning. Like Being able to like interact with these creatures that were stories tall... Uh, was just an amazing thing. This didn't have that kind of sense of wonder that mm -hmm. I got from Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, and it also didn't seem technically as impressive as Shadow of the Colossus did. That was such a small slice of gameplay, though. Like, there's yeah, still yeah. so much they can show off. Yeah. Uh, I would expect them to show something they crossed that was one bridge as impressive. Prior. That was one bridge, okay? Yes, but it's a demo. You know, they're trying to build hype for the game. I would expect them to show something that's as impressive as they can. And uh, I am, like, I'm definitely excited for this game, but I'm a little less excited than yeah, I was Shadow. Okay. Shadow of the Colossus was huge, you know? 
this game, I don't know. We'll see. Is it going to be... What's it going to be? Who knows? Maybe it'll be better than I think it is, but I was a little bit let down by the graphical fidelity of the game and uh, kind of that sense of wonder just wasn't there like it was for Shadow of the Colossus for me. Well, I, I guess I can kind of understand that. The one thing I'll say about Team Eco is that every game they make has its own niche. And in, in the original Eco, it was like a quest where you were taking this maiden through the entire game, holding her hand, telling her what to do. Shadow of the Colossus was a completely different experience where you're climbing these giant colossi. And I think this one here is going to have its own niche as well. And I guess once we actually get the controllers in our hand, we'll really understand what it is. If this falls in line with the previous games, I'm really excited for it. Hopefully it's as good as we all hope it can be. But I want to talk to you guys about this game. There was an amazing game or amazing demo that they showed during E3 this year of a small game called The Division that a lot of people have uh, really been excited to hear more about and see. And they actually showed this whole teamwork dynamic of how you're moving around through the city of New York with uh, your friends, going against other people. There's people creeping up behind you. Did you guys see this this demo? Yeah, the Dark Zone about? gameplay demo was, yeah. I thought, very impressive. And I like the dynamics of it where uh, it's not only PvE, but it's PvP at the same time. You can decide to work together. You can betray your own fire team uh, and take all their loot. Uh, you know, this looting mechanic inside this Dark Zone gameplay, it was really exciting to me. I, I'm I'm hyped for this game. I, I think that uh, after seeing that demo, for some reason, I felt like I was watching uh, an alternate version of a game like Destiny. I just felt like it was a, a team-centered experience yeah. that, you, that you play with your friends, you go out and you mess with other people, you, you steal stuff. It feels like they're marrying games like DayZ with games like Destiny. Yeah, it feels more open-ended than Destiny, right? Like, it feels like the options are wider. What I'm worried about with this game is, like, how big is it going to be? Like, what are what are our options really going to be? And is it too ambitious for its own good? Like, are they trying to do too much at once? Like, it just have, seems like, like Watch it's endless. Syndrome. Yeah, yeah, it just seems like it's pretty much endless. Like, there's just so much to do in it, and there's, like, there's so much they still have to explain, but it does look very impressive, and... I am still incredibly excited about it. I can't wait to uh, play it's it. It's a world I'm definitely excited to explore. I love loot-driven games. Uh, you know, it's just fun to collect loot. Uh, and being able to... I like I like this aspect. At, let's say the three of us are a fire team. We go in, we play together, we open a chest, we all get the same loot. So mm-hmm. if like, there's one really cool gun in there, we all get it. I think we that's awesome. We all get awesome. the Galahorn in the division. Right, we all get the Galahorn. <laughs> uh, but at the end, I can kill you both and take it. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my God. You better not friggin' do that. You are out of the clan, Briar Rabbit, you crazy old man. Yeah, I, I'm really excited to see what this turns into. I mean, there was so much good news at E3, and that was another game that I've been excited to see. It's been so long since we've seen anything from it. Uh, there were some people talking a little bit about this graphics downgrade that they noticed. I didn't really notice that. To me, the game really, looked great. Yeah, it looked really looked great to me, and I'm looking forward to finding out more and playing it when it comes out. All right, so, Beastly, while you were playing Final Fantasy VII with your uh, melodrama and your gussied-up graphics, I was playing Doom on the PC, Doom <laughs> Doom 2, and I was loving it. I was loving getting my Marine through hell with my shotgun and my BFG. And this, what, this what does week, BFG mean, Briar, for people who don't know? What's BFG Big mean? fucking gun. <laughs> big fucking gun. Hell so, yeah. What we saw t- this week was the Doom gameplay reveal. So this is like a reimagining, a reboot of the Doom franchise. And I got to say, this looks fantastic. The- it looks like it's going to be fast. It looks like it's going to be fun. It looks like it's going to be scary. Like, it's got everything that you want out of a Doom game. I- there's not even an aim down sight that we saw in the demo. So it's just going to be you're running around shooting shit as fast as you can with the biggest guns you can find. You know, there's like all sorts of horrific shit coming after you. It's going to be fun as hell. Hey, man, this, looks good. this, this game has Mortal Kombat 11 fatalities in it, okay? Yeah. I mean, that game's not even fucking out yet. One thing I'll say about this game that really made me feel like it was the original Doom, I was introduced to Doom with my PlayStation 1. That's right, Doom came out on PS1. I have it in the living room, and I thought it was the best thing ever. I couldn't believe that the games like this really existed. The game moves very similar to the original Doom. Mm-hmm. You know, the character doesn't have like a trot motion. It's like they're on skate sliding through the map, and, and, and it's really fast, and I didn't expect it to be that quick. A lot of people complain with Doom 3 
that the game was really slow and lethargic, and they took a, took away what made Doom Doom. I think it's a total return to form. The guns look awesome. They did show the BFG at the end of this trailer. Yeah. Uh, they showed it, but it did not show what it did. That's which, good though. I want some surprises. Yeah. 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 Uh, I was really excited. There's different ways that you can murder these demons uh, throughout this game. Did you guys like these finishing moves, I'll say, that you could do in this game? Yeah, I like, thought they were real cool. Those are super cool and yeah. very brutal. Yeah, so uh, expect to see lots of pentagrams and, and sacrif sacrificial lambs in this game. I'm really excited about it. I, I thought that that was one of the best things of E3 this year as well. It yeah. looked awesome. It looks like a modern Doom, but it has roots of the original game. Like It looks like the perfect way they could have done this, honestly. This is the perfect way to bring Doom back. It looks amazing to me. I'm really looking forward to it. And one thing I'll say that I'm really happy to see, you can jump really far in this game without taking any damage. In The Witcher 3, if you fall off your porch, half your energy's gone. <laughs> I, saw, I saw this guy jump like two stories down and land and start shooting. I was like, yeah, this is going to be fun as hell. I guess oh, that yeah. marine suit is badass. It's going to be good stuff. I want to ask you guys, did you guys enjoy... First of all, I'm a, I love the Uncharted games, and I'm not talking about Uncharted right now. And there's a game that's been mentioned of as going against Uncharted this year. It's, a, it's an Xbox One timed exclusive that I hadn't really got a chance to see too much of until E3 this year. It's called Rise of the Tomb Raider. They showed it this year. It blew my fucking mind... I should have a, a reveal of that. I had I mean, no, Ice Wall blew your mind? Really? No. The way the game looked, they, show, they showed a lot in this game, actually. They showed the character models, the way they animate. Uh, Laura Croft looks totally amazing. The ice scene did look uh, pretty fucking exciting to me. I thought it was, that was them climbing a wall. That's literally the whole demo. Like, did you guys see the gameplay they uploaded the other day, like 15 minutes? It was 10 times better. They should have shown that at E3. They just well, uploaded the some other gameplay. That's a really good sign because I really like what they showed at E3. Of course, I think they could have showed more than her rock climbing, but it turned into a more frantic experience with her falling and surviving and running in an avalanche. I thought that was really cool and dynamic uh, scenes that they showed. And I'm excited for this game, man. I think I'll, I'll definitely have this day one. I think the game looks phenomenal. To me, the game looks as good as the new Uncharted. The new I yeah. adored the reboot. Uh, it was really, absolutely really good. loved it, so I can't wait for this game. Yeah, it, it really uh, got me excited. Another game that I saw that I really, really am excited for, I'm giddy for this game because I played the original and it got me through some tough times in life because life is hard on a brother from times, time to time. Mirror's Edge, the remake, it's like a reboot to Mirror's Edge. It's called Catalyst. Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Uh, did you guys see this and what did you think about it? It looks great. looks very impressive to me. Yeah. I haven't really played the first one that much, but this... Looks stunning. It looks really, really good. Now, and if they confirm I'll... there's no guns in it, like there's guns, but you can't use a gun, so that, that's yeah. perfect. It was like the worst part of the first game. Hell yeah, it's terrible. Gun in that game. It was. It was absolutely terrible. Uh, when they showed this game initially, I forget how long ago they showed it. I wasn't really impressed with it. To me, it didn't look like Mirror's Edge. It didn't feel like Mirror's Edge when I saw it months and months ago. But when they showed it at E3 this year, I felt like I was at home. I can't wait to pick up that controller and make Faith do what she does. I want to see the evolution of what that game was. Other games have kind of stolen from it lately, like Dying Light. But I want to see what they can do with that actual franchise and make it awesome again. And hopefully this time it gets the commercial success that it deserves because I think that the game was amazing. It was a critical success, but commercially it flopped. And I'm happy to see them uh, rebirthing this awesome game. So one of the Absolutely. cool things about that game, there's a lot of people who haven't played it, so I want to explain why this was such a cool game, is that... It was a parkour kind of game, right? Is you were constantly running away from enemies or trying to get somewhere really quickly. First on, person. Yeah, and it was first person, uh, and it took a lot of it took place on like rooftops or like you know structures in the air. So you were jumping around, and they had like uh, visual indicators for where you needed to go next. So even if it was your first playthrough, uh, you knew where you had to go. It wasn't like confusing, and it just it was just so kinetic and so fun. Uh, and it took skill. Like, you actually had to get good at the control scheme. Mm -hmm. If you've ever played an Endless Runner, it actually had a feeling kind of like an Endless Runner where, you know, these games are for, like, iOS and Android phones where your guy just kind of keeps running across the screen and you got to either hit jump or slide or jump or slide. It was kind of like that, but in, third per or in first person. And you had, like, kind of a moveset that was just fun to use. 
and you felt really powerful, even though you the combat in it, <laughs> there were some takedowns, but for the most part, the combat sucked, so you didn't want to use it. You just wanted to keep moving. To see this get another crack, like to see them take another crack at it, it could be something really special, and I hope it is. I really do, because the first game had so much potential, and it was so close to being a really great game, but that combat sucks so bad. <laughs> yeah, and the gunplay should have even existed in that game. That I'm good. really happy about it, and uh, I think that it'll be a good thing for everybody this year. I'm really excited. I want to ask you guys about this, because I know we got a lot of guys who are on the Xbox 360 and Xbox One who watch this show. What did you guys think about Halo 5 Guardians? They showed a lot of it at E3 with Microsoft this year, and I want to get you guys' thoughts before I give mine. I, think I didn't dope. think the campaign demo was a little scripted, but it still looks like a fantastic game. Like, the multiplayer is a lot faster. I love the beta. Warzone looks super cool. Like Warzone like, looks so much fun. It looks awesome. Oh, my God, I love that. It's so cool. Hey, my first reaction when I saw the Warzone was, uh, why isn't that in Destiny? <laughs> like, that needs to be in Destiny. Damn it, Fungie. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I think that 343 is going to redeem themselves with this, Briar. Uh, when I saw this game, I was like, holy shit. The, first of all, the campaign looked amazing. The multiplayer looked insane. And I think this is probably the most excited I'll be for Halo since Halo 2. I think this is probably the most excited people are going to be. It looks fantastic. The game graphically looks amazing. You know, it moves at a nice, smooth pace. The multiplayer looks extremely exciting. And uh, that's a day one for me. So it's a really good thing for Xbox gamers to uh, know that they're going to have Halo. They might not have Call of Duty this year, but they're definitely going to have Halo well, this year. getting Call of Duty. It's going to be the same game. You're going to get DLC a month later. Like, that is yeah. not a deal breaker at all. I played Call of Duty all on PlayStation last gen. I did not care for one second about getting the DLC, like, a month late. Maybe a little bit, but, like, it didn't bother me, really. It's a month. Big deal. It's the same Look, game. Th- I agree with you, but there's something we missed that uh, just flew in my head. That I have to ask you guys about it. Doom. This Doom reboot that they're making, they have this new thing where you can actually build your own levels. Yep, the map them. editor. Yep. This map editor. What did you guys think of that? To me, that's like the, the coolest thing I've seen in any of like a multiplayer type of arena. You can make your own type of maps. You can create horde modes. You can play make three versus three, five versus five. You can make only certain type of weapons spawn. I think this is like the craziest thing I've seen in a long time. That right there alone, I was like, oh my god, this is going to be head and shoulders above the competition. Did you guys feel the same way? Definitely. Yeah. It was very, very cool. It looked like a very extensive creator, too. Like, there's so many possibilities, so many cool game types you can play. Like, it could be endless fun just making, seeing what kind of experiments you can do and making different maps, different modes. Like, yeah, I think this is awesome. Endless replayability. If they can get that to stick, if they can get a, a, a base of creators out there making, like, good content, it could be just endless replayability. You know, with Doom 2, they had it. You know, they mm-hmm. they had editors out there. You could create your own uh, Doom 2 levels, and it was fun as hell to go out there and play Doom 2 in a bedroom, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> your little tiny Doom guy in, like, this giant bedroom. It was fun as hell. You know, all that kind of stuff was great. They had it for yeah. Quake, too, didn't they? You could... I remember downloading Quake levels. Mm. I think I do, anyway. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe you're just too old and crazy to remember. Correctly. <laughs> I don't know. Moving on to Battlefront, guys. What did you think of that? So, I, I got another uh, Xbox game I want to ask you guys about. What about Battlefront? Robbie just brought oh, up Battlefront. Oh, Battlefront. Oh, Star Wars. Okay, I can't uh, believe we haven't talked about that because the demo at the end of the EA conference, that was... I almost cried it looked so good. Like It that was, was amazing. Unbelievable. It looks so good. And people are saying like it actually plays that good too. Like it feels like a huge battle in a Star Wars universe. Like it, it looks incredible. It just God damn that demo was so good. <laughs> I never thought it would be that good. Like I was like, it's gonna be great, it's nice, it's gonna be awesome, but holy shit, like, it looks so good. I talked to a couple of people who played it at E3 and they said yes. It looks that good, running on a PlayStation 4, and it plays that and good. Plays that good. Yeah. I'm shocked. I, I can't believe it pl- It looks that good. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I, I was really shocked, and after watching that extensive gameplay they showed at E3, I don't care that it doesn't have a, a, a campaign at this point. Oh, if, I can, if I can just do that over and over again and go out and play as different character classes and do different things and take down walkers and all this stuff, that's all I want. And every now this... and then I, I see Darth Vader come and grab Briar or some shit, I'm not going to be the hero. I'm going to fucking run. It looks okay. bastard. 
this and Horizon for me just I never expected it to be this good. Like, wow, that demo was unbelievable. That was so gorgeous and so incredible. I, it looks like the perfect Star Wars game. I, it I'm really sure. does. One thing I'm trying to figure out is how they're going to implement these characters. Like, there are pivotal characters from the story that you can play as in the game. They show Luke, they show Darth Vader. Do you guys think these would be kill streak type of rewards? If you kill a certain amount of enemies, then maybe you could turn into them for a brief period of time. Does that make sense to you, maybe? Maybe like a timer kind of countdown or like a randomizer thing where maybe you randomly spawn in as one of them. I have no idea how that would work. Or if you're top on the team... I don't know. Some kind of yes, yeah, something like a kill streak that works. It'd be a fucking cool ass kill streak. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Darth, Vader. Darth Vader inbound. You just deploy the care package. He pops out. You hop in the suit. Yeah, there you go. All right. So another thing, real quick, I want to talk, touch on you, you guys. There's been a lot of talk about rare. Everybody's been talking about Battle Toads and you know Banjo and all these rare games. Microsoft has been talking about them at their pre- their previous conferences and wearing rare shirts. Rare announces Rare Collection, a 30th anniversary collection of all these, well, I guess it's 30 games is their collection. For $30. What did, you guys, what did you guys think about this? Basically, it's a collection of 30 Rare games, including things like Perfect Dark, Banjo-Kazooie, Conker's Bad Fur Day, Battletoads is on there. Um, what do you guys think about this collection? Do you think it'll, it'll be well-received? I'm super excited about it. Insane value. I mean, 30 games for $30. Like... <laughs> That's pretty insane, and some of them like are definitely worth at least like five, ten dollars too, just on their own. So what this platform is, is it coming out for? It's coming for Xbox, Xbox One. One. That's it. That's yep. it. I think I'd be more excited if it's coming out for the DS or the Vita. Oh, okay. Oh, because those look. I don't know, Brian, because they're full fledged like Nintendo sixty four games. Mm-hmm. They're they're full fledged. I think Perfect Dark that was on Xbox three. No, that was on sixty four. Uh, so I don't know how well they would translate to a portable medium because they are long story based games. I don't think you can you can dissect those into smaller chunks. I don't know how it will work. I don't know, man. I feel like having them for the nostalgia factor would be great, but I feel like once you have them, you're not going to play them because I got a lot of them in there. They yeah, got Golden Eye in there. Is Golden Eye going to be in there? Uh, I think Golden Eye is, isn't it? I doubt it. I, I think this is just going to be about the value. Everybody's going to hear, whoa, 30 games for $30. Holy crap. Like, everyone's just going to buy it, and then who knows how long it's going to last. Yeah. Like, they're going to be really old games. I don't know. We'll see. They're not going to have the Nintendo stuff, right? Uh, no, they do. They do. They do. They, they, do. Do. they, got, okay. they got Conquer, and um, they got... Battletoads. They got Battle Banjo. Toads. You know, they got all that. Hmm. So I, I guess I we'll know, see I'm what happens. Like remakes. I want new games. I'm, I'm done with old games. Yeah, I, f- I mean, I got the 64. I got two 64s in the living room, and I very seldom play them. And I got these games that we just mentioned, and I hardly ever put them in there because they're old games. I want to play new stuff. Speaking of new stuff and new technology, what did you guys think of the HoloLens? I guess I can call it their showing of the HoloLens. They put the HoloLens on the stage. There was a young lady playing Minecraft on her, her tablet, and she was actually playing with someone who was using the HoloLens and actually interfacing with the world as she played with them. Did you guys see this demo? Yeah. I thought it was fucking phenomenal. It was pretty I, ridiculous. I have to have this. Minecraft was coming out of the table. He was able to look into the world and see her and inter- interact with her. I thought that was the coolest thing I've ever seen. And that's something I feel like my kids are watching it. My 13 and 14-year-old, they said, Dad, please, 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 can I have it? I think it's something we got to have just based my- on that. My biggest question for this is what I have for a lot of this technology, the same with VR, the same with even Kinect back in the day, is it really going to work as well as they show in the demos? Because look at like what happened with Kinect. It looked impressive. Like You could like scan your skateboard into the game and stuff. None of that stuff really came into fruition. Like It looked like it worked one-to-one. Of course, it wasn't even close, Like especially the original Kinect was a clunky mess. I don't, I don't know if... It's gonna work as well as it looks in the demos. Like I'm really, really skeptical about that, but we'll see. I, it looks impressive. I, I'm more optimistic about VR right now because everybody is doing it. Everybody's yeah. doing it. Hall is what, definitely different, though. Yeah. You know, I mean, all these major, you know, Fortune 500 companies are getting involved in some way, shape, or form in VR tech. I think as gamers, we inherently want VR. I remember, Brian, you remember back when VR was green lines, and it was just 3D polygonal three lines. Yeah. And even even back then, we thought that was pretty amazing, right? You guys are so old. 
Yeah, well, that's the truth. That's what it used to be. I remember playing the punch, punch out the arcade. Briar's not happy that I said that. <laughs> it's all good. I love it. That's what VR used to be. And so I think we inherently want VR tech for video games. And I think right now the technology is finally reaching that precipice where it's possible. A lot of uh, companies are showing that they're interested in this. I think that they believe this is the, the direction that gaming and the future is going to go. And I think this is just the start. I think it's going to be really good for gaming. It's future. interesting. Augmented reality is interesting, right? VR, you can you can immediately see the use case for, right? Is you're instantly submerged into this world that you can now play in. AR is just a little bit different because it's a blending of the world you're in mm -hmm. plus you know this overlay of graphics. Mm -hmm. It could be really cool. They had another demo with uh, Halo, like Halo Waypoints, yeah. and I thought that was pretty cool too. But it's like you know that had to be pretty well scripted. They couldn't do that around your house, right? Could yeah. they? Or yeah. could they? I don't know. I don't know. Could they I make mean, like an AR game in your neighborhood, like where oh, you be, so awesome. be the master chief in your neighborhood, or like is that a possible thing? I don't know. <laughs> that's what that's been always a dream of mine is like to somehow uh, merge Call of Duty and Google Maps so you could play Call of Duty like in your own neighborhood. I always thought that'd be wicked cool. I, one um, day, it's, one day it's going to happen, Brian. I swear. I yeah. mean. It's going to get to the point where you're going to wear some glasses and all the technology is going to be in the glasses and you're going to walk down the street and you're going to see a waypoint pop up above someone's head who also has a pair of glasses on and that's the enemy in the game. And, and yeah, I'm telling you, you're going to say, happen. murder this bitch. And you're going to do it. And it was like, oh shit. Uh, error. <laughs> <laughs> It'll definitely happen one day, but who knows when. That seems well, like it's pretty cool. I think at least until we have flying cars, we need to keep the VR and AR inside so nobody gets hit by a car. You know, I was chasing the theoretical ball, and I got hit by a, a semi-truck standing in the house. You know? <laughs> but then an error message comes up, and you're totally fine. <laughs> oh, man. So, look, we're approaching our time, guys. Uh, we had a late show today, but I do want to get you guys' thoughts on who you think won E3 and why. And if you didn't think anyone won you thought it was close, that's fine as well. So, Robbie, why don't you start? Tell me who you thought won E3 and maybe what made that that win, you know, solidified in your mind. Everyone except EA, because EA really sucked. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Sony won because... I think the Microsoft conference was still really, really good. I think the Ubisoft conference was really great, too. Sony's was just, like, hit after hit. I mean, they started off with The Last Guardian, which should have been incredible news. That should have been the biggest news by far. Like, that's huge to have that game finally back. But they just kept coming. That stunning Horizon demo, Final Fantasy VII Remade, Shenmue 3. Uncharted? Like, the punches even... did not stop. It just did not stop. Like, it just we... kept... It was like, go, 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 go. Like, just show everything. Like, fire every single friggin' gun <laughs> we have on this damn ship. Just don't stop. Just keep going. <laughs> Oh, that's so awesome. You're telling the truth. We didn't even talk about this, guys, so I'll just pause and let Briar give his reaction. What did you guys think about the Uncharted 4 demo that they showed? I thought it was amazing. I didn't like the demo. You it was like, like we're just watching him drive through this town for too long. I wanted to get out and like see some more stuff. Ah, uh, okay. What did you think, Robbie? I thought it was really good when it worked, but yeah. Yeah, it did suck that it didn't work. <laughs> it, it glitched out at the very beginning. I think I think maybe somebody's controller wasn't working or something. Yeah, it seemed like. But yeah, it was just this like driving scene, and like it was an impressive driving scene. But that's not why I come to uh, Uncharted. I come to Uncharted to see jump right. from right. car to car. Right. It, it was it was quite the driving scene, though. You have to. <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty damn epic. I liked that the, when they started this uh, demo, how everybody in this little center was doing something. It wasn't like they were just static standing there. They were actually carrying on conversations, walking around and doing stuff, and then in real time you kind of maneuver through them, and then this yeah. crazy scene ensues where this gun, this turret truck is shooting at you, and like everything there was destructible. That was crazy to me, that every single thing they were shooting at pretty much was blowing up. I want to know how much of that was like on rails, though. Like How much agency do you have to drive around that town? Didn't it feel like it was kind of on rails driving? Well, uh, on the, the during the post show, a representative from Naughty Dog came and talked uh, to I think it was GameSpot, and they were asking him, you know, how many different ways can you do this? He said, you can go anywhere. He said, you can go under the bridge, you can go over there, you can. He said, you can pretty much drive where you want. So, well, I guess we'll, time will tell just how much of that is true. But I was really impressed by it. I thought graphically it was stunning. I was happy to see uh, Sully and uh, see how he looked in this new reborn PlayStation 4 makeup. 
I'm really excited for this game, man. I oh, really yeah. am. I think it's, it's going to be amazing. It's going to yeah. be awesome. Yeah. All right, so let us con- <laughs> let us continue. Uh, Briar Rabbit, uh, what are your thoughts on E3? Do you think there was a definitive winner? Do you think? What are your thoughts? I, I was most excited for Bethesda. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, Doom took me by surprise. I thought it was phenomenal. Uh, Fallout 4 was like the highlight of the show for me. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And, and I, I can honestly totally respect that and understand that. I'm going to have to tell you guys my belief and who I think won. I think um, I think uh, Sony won. Yes, clearly and, it was the only company we haven't talked to about at all this entire show. They must have had the best press conference. Forgot <laughs> <laughs> to mention them. I, I did watch Nintendo's uh, so-called E3 press conference, and I will say, like so many of my friends on Facebook and social media said, I'm incredibly disappointed in Nintendo. I, I think it wasn't good. I think they, they've let it be known that the Wii U, in their eyes, is dead. They only, they only showed, like, three games for it. They showed Star Fox, which to me looked like it was in development for six months. They're they clearly ready for the NX. Like, they're done with the Wii U. You know the Wii U is kind of past now. Like, next year, I'm sure it's all going to be about the NX, and it's yeah. coming out next year. I agree. And let me continue. The reason that I think that Sony won, I think that Microsoft did a ph- phenomenal E3. I think theirs was better than Bethesda's. They just showed game after game after game. They didn't talk about yeah. TV. They didn't mention the Kinect, which is clearly dead at this point. And I even said it to my wife. I said, how the hell is Sony going to beat this? I think Sony came yeah. out, and they hit they hit home run after home run after home run after home run, and then they hit the home run of the century with Final Fantasy VII, which was, to me, the biggest hit. And then 45 seconds later, they hit me with Shinmue, which we didn't even talk about. The yeah. Shinmue 3 Kickstarter, which already, I think it's at 4 or $5 million already, so they've already completely creamed their, uh, the mark that they wanted to hit. But those right there, on top of you know showing the, the games we mentioned earlier, Horizon, uh, Uncharted, these games really mean a lot to me. And Final Fantasy VII, as you guys know, is one of my favorite games of all time. That really meant a lot to me. And uh, like I said, Microsoft, I gave them an A. I gave Sony an A+. That's how close it was for me. The I only just thing think about Sony's pref- concert, press conference for me was the fact that none of those games seem like they're coming out this year. It seems like the, the best press conference of 2015 for games that are coming out in 2016 or 2017. You know, Microsoft yeah. was showing games that were coming out this year. I felt like that was a big differentiator between the two of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Microsoft did show more games that are coming out this year. I just honestly was more excited for Sony. I just was. I mean, uh, after I watched Microsoft's conference, I talked about it. I was really excited about it. And then at, at 9 o'clock, after Sony showed theirs, I forgot everything Microsoft talked about. I complete, We didn't even talk about Gears of War. <laughs> but I completely forgot what Microsoft was talking about after I saw Sony's you know, that news is just too much for me. It was too massive. And that's why i got to give Sony my E3 press conference in 2015. I think that Sony did a fantastic job. I think Microsoft did a fantastic job. Bethesda did a fantastic job. I even think Square did a pretty damn good job. But overall, to me, Sony was the one. I think that they put the nail in the coffin. They dropped the mic. They did all that shit. The Last Guardian, I thought it was fantastic. And that was my, uh, my conference of 2015, my favorite one. This E3 was definitely a good one. This is definitely yeah. one of my favorites. I think that show so was incredible. So much software. So much software. So many new games announced. Like, a lot of stunning-looking games. I couldn't even make a top five list if I tried. Like 2013 so was hard. hot because we got to see the Xbox One and the PlayStation 3, right? Last mm-hmm. year was kind of lame because there's so little new software coming out, right? This, this year, year oh, my God. Was so software. much. So oh, much software. I mean, we're, we're pushing our limit, but I just real quick want to ask you guys... What did you guys think of Rainbow Six? And what did you guys think of Ghost Recon? Please tell me you saw the Ghost Recon. Ghost video. Recon trailer looks good. Oh that was awesome. God. I couldn't tell what it was the whole way. I was like, is this Ghost Recon? No, this is this is Splinter Cell. I was like, I, I couldn't tell. Was, like, yeah, like it looked like a little bit like Just Cause. It looked a little bit like uh, a Tom Clancy game. It was hard to tell. Because he said that this is going to be a new take on an established franchise. I'm like, what is this? I couldn't tell. I was like, it looks amazing, whatever it is. I can't tell what franchise this is. And then Ghost Recon, sure enough. And I was like, that was awesome. Yeah, I think Ghost Recon was like my first military shooter I've really got into. Jungle Storm and stuff back on Xbox, the original Xbox, Mm -hmm. and on PlayStation 2. And uh, I played the hell out of those when Internet was new and people were finally playing on consoles. And uh, I'm really excited to see... Ghost Recon Return to Form. I'm super excited about this Rainbow Six Siege, man. I I saw a lot of that during E3 this year. There's so much team-centric gameplay going on there and communication and 
I yeah. think that's going to be something to behold. And, Multiplayer and gaming like, is really coming into its own. I think that developers are really working it into games. Uh, making you you and your friends work together is provi- providing a much more fun experience than working against each other. I think that uh, game companies are really discovering that and having a good time with it. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a hell. It's a great time to be a gamer if you don't own a yeah. Wii U. It's it's a great time. I don't own a Wii U. I'm just being honest. There was really nothing about Nintendo. That console so- is done. They're clearly done with it. It's hey. yeah. Yeah, well, they got Yoshi's Epic. You're not, that looked like shit to me too. I was like, God, I'm not six. I don't want to play this. Give me something I want to play. You know. So I felt about Nintendo for a long time. I think Man. we should wrap it up. So what do you think? Yeah, yeah, I think it was a great show. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Beastly, what are you up to this week? I'm going to be playing video games. I'm headed back to work this week. I had a long vacation of nine days. I hung out with my family. I went out of town. I ate great food and 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 just laid back and made great videos. So I'm looking forward to getting back on my, my routine, making my videos, playing some video games with you guys. Be sure to check out Briar Rabbit's channel if you're on my channel. Be able to swing by mine if you get a chance and check out Robbie Skull's channel. There'll be links in the description, guys. That's right. Robbie, what are you up to this week? So this week, I totally forgot this is coming out because of E3, even though I love the previous games and I should be stupid excited for this. Batman Arkham Knight is coming out on Tuesday. <laughs> really? <laughs> two days. Two days. <laughs> I know. Out of nowhere. I'm like, I totally forgot because of E3. Uh, it's coming out on Tuesday. Tomorrow uh, night, it's going to be available. Uh, wow. it, it got all 9.5s like, across the I'm so the excited. Planet. Like, every, I loved Arkham City so it. much. It was an incredible game. It got like, like nines and tens everywhere. I wow. haven't had time to even get excited for this because like E3 is just taking over everything, but it's out tomorrow. All right, wow. I'm playing that. I'm gonna be playing that. I'm gonna I gotta be find out what I'm doing this week. Damn, we're all gonna be playing <laughs> Same Batman. here, guys. Same here. Damn. But it's about me. This week I'll be playing some Destiny. Obviously, I just found out I'll be playing some uh, <laughs> Batman as well. <laughs> just, just recently, <laughs> just recently found out about that. <laughs> um, I, the Sharded or Keep It series, people have been asking for the next episode of that. That will be released tomorrow, so look forward to that. Uh, and uh, I think that's going to do it for the show. Thanks to everybody to watch uh, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Beastly, Robbie, and myself. And uh, come check us out on Twitter as well. There's links in the description. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Bye, guys.